front of my melody You are all that matters You are all that matters I'll make room for two You and I, Jesus You are all that matters You are all that matters Oh, hey, oh You are all that matters Oh, hey, oh You are all that matters Oh, hey, oh You are all that matters Nanya mana sasa What would I gain if you take the Holy Ghost? What would I become of me if I didn't see a light? Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity. Another beautiful day that the Lord has given us to see His goodness and His mercy that endures forever. Today, our morning devotion is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, beginning 7 up to 11. But I will also look at verse 6. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts this morning. We want to glorify your name, Jehovah Lord, for giving us another opportunity, King of Glory, to see this beautiful day. There are many who went to sleep and were not able to wake up. But Lord, you've given us a chance for us to restore our relationship with you. We want to thank you, Lord, that as we share this morning briefly, may the words that are going to come out of my mouth be useful unto your presence. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, the book of Deuteronomy is not a new book. We have actually gone through it and uh, we are looking at the Ten Commandments that Moses had to give the Israelites. We all know about the story of the Israelites leaving Egypt, going to Canaan. And usually when people are doing in an organization there must be rules and regulations to be followed. Even in our houses we have the way we do things. In our places of work, we also have what is expected of us by the bosses and the people who, who are heading the institution. Today, again, I want to tell you that Moses, in preparation, was preparing the Israelites, and therefore he had to give them the commandments which were given to him by God to share with the Israelites so that they were to obey and live according to it. From verse 6 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Verse 8, You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in, uh, in heaven, above or on the earth, beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of, these, of those who love me and keep my commandments. 11 says, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold any gui uh, guideless who misuses his name. Obsa observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Now these are the commandments. This is just part of the commandments that were given to the Israelites. And they were to obey. As I say, my theme is here, 
listen and obey. The Lord wants you also this morning that you hear his word, listen to his word, and obey his command. These commandments are not new to you also. They are also not new to me. But we need to remind one another that what does the Lord actually mean by hear, listen, and obey? Uh, the Israelite people had entered into a covenant with God. And when you enter into a covenant, it is sealed. You have entered into an agreement and you are expected to follow and abide to it. <coughs> Christians also have entered into a covenant with God through Jesus Christ and should be responsible in what God actually expects us to do. We are Christians and we have entered into a covenant with God through Jesus Christ. And the other day we learned that Jesus Christ is the one that connects us with our creator. He stands in the gap to connect us with the Lord whom we serve. Now Moses commanded the Israelites to hear, learn, and obey his regulations, the regulations that the Lord God whom we serve wanted them to know. Moses commanded uh, the Israelites to provide excellent advice for all God's followers. Now, when we look at the word listening, you, when you hear, when you listen, you are able to hear. This is absorbing and accepting information about God. They were to hear, to listen, hear, and to absorb the information about God. In learning, we are talking about underst understanding what it actually means the commandment understanding what the commandments actually meant and their implications and obeying this is putting into action all we have learned and understood so the Israelites were to put in action what they had learned and understood now all these three are essential for a growing Christian and therefore even you this morning I want to tell you that you are to hear the word of God, listen to the word of God, and obey the word of God. Now let us come to the commandment number seven in verse seven. You shall have no other gods before me. That is what NIV is telling us. You shall have no other gods before me. Sometimes in our lives as Christians, we have other gods that we are worshipping. We have many gods whom we are actually worshipping. But the Lord is reminding us this morning that you shall have no other god before me. You shall have no other gods before me. Sometimes it is your job that has actually become your, job, your god. And you are worshipping your job. I know it is out of this that we are able to receive our income that we use on a daily basis to feed our families, probably to pay our rent, to pay the basic needs for the, for the basic needs, and also even to pay for the bills. We have made this to be our God. The Lord is reminding you this morning that put him first. Hear his word. Listen to him and obey you should not have any other God before him. Some people literally worship other gods by joining cults and even other religious groups which are not godly. Many of us worship other gods by building our lives around something other than the one true God whom we are supposed to worship. If your greatest desire is for popularity, power or money, you are devoting yourself to something other than God. Therefore, this morning, I want to remind you, brethren, that devote your time to worship God. Hear his word every day and every moment of your lives. The Bible states it very clearly that between you and even your family, who comes first? It is God who comes first. 
and therefore listen to him and obey his command. Listen to him, hear him, hear his call and do that he wants us to do. To put God first means we are recognizing what is taking place in his place. I mean, what is taking his place in our lives. Putting God first in your life will mean you are realizing what is this that is taking the place of God in your life. We have reached a time whereby the gadgets that we use, like the mobile phones, the tablets, the laptops, the computers that we have are actually consuming our time. New technology is good, but these ones are actually placing. They are replacing God in our lives because we are spending much time in using those gadgets just to browse in to see what is there, the comments which our people are putting in the WhatsApps, what is new today. We have so many groups other groups that, than even the Christian groups. I want you this morning to look at yourself and ask God, your creator, how many groups are you in that are godly and how many of them that are not godly? Another one is renounce this substitute God as unworthy of your devotion. Renounce, my friends, because this that is substituting God in your life we lead you to perish. May the Lord whom we serve teach us something in our lives so that we are able to forget about other things but give, put God first in our lives. Ask God for forgiveness. If you are a victim of circumstances I plead with you this morning that ask God for forgiveness. Go back to him Seek him, cry for him, apologize, repent, and the Lord whom we serve will hear your cry, will hear your prayer, and will answer you, and you will be forgiven. Restructure your priorities so that love for God is the motive for everything you do. I want you this morning as you leave your houses to places of work, restructure yourself such that your priorities, the first priority that you are going to have is to sit down and read the Bible, to restore your relationship with your creator. Thereafter, you have the whole day. You only have to take 30 minutes with him or even 15 minutes with him or even 45 minutes with him. Thereafter, you have the whole day to, share, to do all sorts of things that you want to do. So this morning, I want to encourage you young, my friends, the young and the old, that wake up, have a relationship with your creator. Sit down and share the Bible. If you know you are reporting to duty at eight, may, the, may you find it in your heart to wake up a little bit early so that you are able to sit down and share. The Lord whom we serve is watching you wherever you are and even in your room, whatever you are doing. Even when you are in your means of transport to your place of work, he is watching you and if you love him, he is there with you. And the Bible is telling one us that examine yourself daily to be sure you are going, you are giving God first place in your life. Sometimes we were asked, somebody asked me, what are the personalities that you prefer, you'll give order of preferences in your life. Somebody said, he will, first of all, he loves himself, or I will say, I love myself. Second, I love my children. But I want to tell you that the best is love God first. And the Bible is also teaching us that love your neighbor as you love yourself. Therefore, even before you love your neighbor, before you love yourself, may you find into your heart so that you love the Lord who brought you into this world and created you according to his image, beautifully and wonderfully created according to his image. Because this God whom we are serving, 
is a living God and will be able to give us what we want. Now, verse 8 and 9 says, You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. I want to remind you this morning that you are not going to make, you should not make something an idol to worship. How do you feel when somebody takes your photo and walks with your photo along the street to show that this person loves you, yet deep from the bottom of your heart, you know you do not love the person? It sounds strange. How will you feel if someone look, uh, uh, took a picture of yourself, framed it, shared at it, and showed it to others, but completely ignores even talking with you? For example, somebody claims to, to be close with you or somebody loves you simply by so walking with your image, your photo, in a frame, yet you know you don't even talk, yet you know you don't even relate well with this person, then we are cheating ourselves. This is exactly how the Lord whom we serve feels, that when you are out, you should not make an idol, you should not worship other gods, but worship God alone, because God wants to have a relationship with you. God wants you to hear his words, he wants you to listen to his word, and he also wants you to obey his commands. Thou shalt not worship any other God before me. Thou shalt not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything but only God. God doesn't want to be treated this way. God wants you to accept him in your heart, know him, and walk with him day and night. And that is what he is actually pleading you to do this morning. 11 says, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. We have actually misused the Lord's name. Even for petty things, that does not require us to call the name of the Lord. Haki Mungu, where did this word come from? Where did this word come from? Anything small, Haki Mungu. Brethren, this morning you are starting a new day. Go out with a lot of vigor. Be encouraged and serve the Lord. Have a relationship with him so that even when, when you have a relationship with Christ, you will be smiling. People even will be wondering why you are smiling. Because of the joy that you have in your heart. Because of the love that the Lord is showing you all the time. And you will never regret it. May God bless us this morning. May God be with us. May God open our ears to hear. May God give us the understanding. We listen and we understand. And may God whom we serve, who is our creator, who made us to come into this world, also give us strength to obey his commandments without looking back, without, doub without doubts, without even thinking twice, because we know that the Lord whom we serve is wonderful. May the Lord God be with you this morning, but remember not to call the name of your Lord anyhow. Do not use the word, do not use Haki Amungu because it is not correct. The Lord wants you to be Christians who are also disciplined, who obeys the commandments, who understands God, who knows exactly what they are supposed to do, who believeth in the Lord whom they serve. Because the strength that we have, we are given by God. It's not by our own, but the Lord God has given it to us. May God bless you, and may God bless you abundantly. Amen. Shana bana ne sana Shana bana na bana na saka